The only way that is actually unbound from the soil, one of the most effective ways, is to get a phosphorus solubilizing microbe into that soil structure. So as the plant is using extradition to speak to the microbes and feed them, yep. then if those microbes are there, they kick into gear, excrete enzymes, solubilize the phosphorus, consume it, and give the plant a version that they can take up and utilize. People have an opinion that uh, certain minerals like phosphorus are tightly bound to the soil and completely unavailable, so they just have to be added as a chemical on top. Yes. Um, but that's an opinion that's been formed by managing duopolies. Yes or monocultures in, a, in intensive agriculture over a long period of time, it's not necessarily the case when you've got multiple species. So by reintroducing the nutrients that would be there with multiple species, all of a sudden you're alleviating the phosphorus problem as well. Correct. And they can also help regulate the pH, which is one of the key drivers of phosphorus tie-up in soil structure, is pH. Lower the pH, the more the phosphorus is bound chemically to that soil particle. So pH, and its variation from the ideal is actually a symptom of poor soil health Correct. rather than the cause of poor Correct. soil health. And, and usually that symptom is driven by the overuse of synthetic nutrition. Now there's there's definitely a role for synthetic nutrition to be played and, and even chemistry in fact. Synthetic nutrition of salts which cause acidification. Correct and it's the overuse of those and just the, the, the constant use as the only tool to be able to get your pastures to grow is where we start falling into these problems after 5, 10, 15 years of co constantly doing these things without putting back either the microbes themselves or feeding the system, the soil system itself.